most famous and controversial attempts began in Nevada. On June 21st, 1966, an infant chimpanzee arrived in our laboratory. We named her Washoe for Washoe County, the home of the University of Nevada. Because she was captured wild in Africa, we will never know just where or when Washoe was born. But we estimate that she was about 10 months old when she arrived in Reno. Because chimps' vocal apparatus doesn't allow them to make the sounds of human speech, psychologists Alan and Trixie Gardner decided to teach Washoe sign language, used by the deaf. To help Washoe learn her signs, they used many techniques, including fun and familiar games repeated over and over again. The first sign that we did indeed teach to Washoe was a sign for more. 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 Natural chimpanzee gestures provided the basis for some signs. Come. Open. Open, hurry. Open. Open, hurry. Open, hurry. Open, open, open. Where is the play baby? Where? As she grew up, Washer's vocabulary gently expanded. For the first time, an ape was shown to use a human language. Smart, Washer. Good, 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 me. Yes, you're very good. Good, go. Good, go. Where? You, peekaboo, out me. Oh, play hide, peekaboo. Okay, come good Washo, come with me. The gardeners reported that Washo could eventually use 133 signs. Good Wash and I'm gonna go. By then, Washo was five years old. Good me. The gardeners expanded their laboratory by moving to a ranch outside Reno. After Washoe, their findings were repeated with four other chimpanzees, all raised like children from birth and with personalities just as individual. This is the living quarters of, of chimpanzee Tatu. And they are all special, but she was quite special in what a neat chimpanzee she was. For her, we could keep all sorts of things out here, just as you see them now. And Tatu would leave them as they were. She would hop in a very chimp-like fashion all over this, this cabin. She was not content to stay on the floor, but she left these objects as they should be. Tatu, unlike our others, had black as her very favorite color. We would go through magazines looking for black things and she would go around naming black things for you. That's black, and that's black, and that is black. And sometimes you could even tease her about that. You'd go through a magazine and she'd point at it and at a picture and give you eye to eye contact, a question, what is that? And for a while you played, played her game and you said, it's black, it's black, using her favorite sign. But then you'd tease her and say it was red, and of course she would correct you right away and say, it's black, that's black. It's a very nice conversational use of sign language. She knew the answer, but she wanted you to talk about that. What we're interested in is not uh, whether it fitted some abstract theory of linguistics, but whether the chimpanzees could actually communicate information to us, things we didn't already know. We had many informal observations of this. For instance, um, a chimpanzee was up high in the tree, could see over the house and see who was arriving. And you could ask Washo, who's coming? And she could tell us, tell us something we didn't know.
Informal observations could not constitute scientific proof, so the gardeners tested their chimps' vocabulary under controlled double-blind conditions. Two independent observers had to agree for a sign to be marked correct. Da could see the image on the screen, but Alan Gardner could not. This excluded the possibility that the chimp was picking up inadvertent clues to the right answer. Smart. Dar was the last chimp to join the project. By the age of five, he had a vocabulary of 122 signs. In the wild, a chimp of Dar's age is only just weaned and won't reach adulthood for another 10 years. The gardeners collected more than 20 chimp years worth of data, some of which is still being sifted and analyzed by a new generation of graduate students. Their research covered many aspects